Hey, this is Chris Marquardt. Um, a bit of a different thing. Here's a video for you. And um, here's my friend John Miller, who Good I'm one. recording this with. And um, the reason is because there is a contest thingy going on right now. And I'm looking for a bit of support there. Um, and th why I'm doing this? Well, John, you are kind of the culprit here. So Yeah, I'm um, the culprit. <laughs> Hello, welcome. <laughs> well, I'll I'll jump in here. So the the reason um, we're we're doing this video today is because Chris is in the competition that some of you might have heard about. Um, we're trying to get him to Antarctica, <laughs> and like you're trying to get me into Antarctica. <laughs> and why you are trying to get me there, we'll we'll see in a minute. Yeah, um, <laughs> you. It's it's not that you want to get rid of me. Of course not. Yes, I, I I want to get rid of you for thirty days. So yeah, Let, just just add by way of introduction, if some if it's kind of kind of unlikely, but if any one of you has not heard of John before, John is the man who got me into the Himalayas, uh, into Nepal, to Mount Everest base camp, uh, to Tibet. Um, so we go way back, pretty much to the beginning of both of our kind of podcasters' careers. And um, well, now, John, you've come across this opportunity. Yeah, so um, an opportunity crossed my inbox saying that uh, his tour company uh, provides uh, cruises, and by cruises, it's, it's not a luxury cruise, but a cruise to Antarctica. And, and I have to say, we're not, we're not affiliated, we're not paid by them to do this. Not this at all. Simply a complete, uh, kind of a, um, you came up with this and got a, you got to. <laughs> So they're giving away this 30 day trip to Antarctica yep. and um, you need to have people vote for you. You need to sign up and then you need to have people vote for you. And then the five people with the most votes, they are kind of into the final round where then uh, the tour company chooses uh, amongst the five of them uh, to give away this free trip. And so I thought with Chris's social media um, following, he probably has a pretty good chance to win this thing, at least to get into the final round. And so as we were kind of talking, you know, he looked it over and he he, he saw that, yeah, this actually looks like a really good good uh, deal here. Um, and so what I figured was we were kind of chatting uh, through uh, mess uh, some text messages and um, he put out this post saying, you know, help me get to Antarctica. And I thought, well, Chris, you need to really remind them that if you go, you will take them with you. Now, and, that, and, and that's, that's pretty much it right in the focus but you do have reasons why you want me to go there yeah so the reason that i'm so excited about this trip is that i myself got an opportunity to go to antarctica back in 2013 um just coming up on three years ago and, and the moment you came back the, from the moment you came back you've been raving about this yeah it was an amazing trip and um, i was down there to film for um to get footage of a photo workshop, uh, not put on by Chris, obviously. But um, I, so I was down there for two weeks and um, it was a cruise, it was similar. It was, you know, half the amount of time that uh, this prize is for. But I got to skirt along the edge of the Antarctic Peninsula and I got to see all the penguins, the seals, and most importantly, got to see the icebergs and all of the glacial ice and the glaciers, you know, calving into the uh, the water. So it was an incredible, incredible experience. And I thought, well, let's not just tell people, okay, you've got to send Chris there. Uh, let's show them why we all need to get behind Chris and, and you, send him there. And you being a video guy, obviously you had your camera with you while you were there. And yeah. you so I have hours and hours and hours of footage. And so what I've done is I've edited together sort of a, a highlight reel. I mean, and highlight is just, that's a very loose word. I am just scratching the surface. I guess you could say it's just the tip of the iceberg of my Ooh. footage. I had, to, I had to fit that in, Chris. But um, so I've got 25 minutes of video here. I think it's really worth your time to watch this whole video to see some of the amazing things that, uh, you know, the photography down there, the opportunities are astounding. It's Before we go into stuff. the video, just in case you just mentioned 25 minutes, if anyone is kind of like, okay, Chris, I want to give you my vote, but I don't want to watch the entire video. Um, the, can you put the URL in here, tfttf.com slash contest? Yeah, That's well, it's a direct way to go there. 
and you will um, you will um, you will require a Facebook account. That's how they use. That's what they use to make sure that people don't like double vote. Um, but that's pretty much it. Go there, like click, and if if you're interested in why John wants me to go there, I guess we can watch the video. Yeah. So let's uh, let's jump right in, and um, we'll start in the uh, Tierra del Fuego, the tip of South America, in a little town called Ushuaia. So here we go. All right, so this is um, leaving Ushuaia. This was in February, so this was uh, late summer down there. And uh, you can see it's definitely ends of the earth. It looks, it's pretty dramatic looking. And uh, this is a small ship. There are only about 100 passengers. Um, so it's, it's not one of these big fancy cruise ships? No, no, no. There were some with, with uh, you know, two, 3,000 passengers there, but not us. We were small. And uh, after just a little bit, you're out in open water. And the uh, light. Yeah, the sunset was very dramatic. And uh, yeah, you're just in open water for several days uh, as you cross the Drake Passage. And again, I was with a bunch of photographers, so everyone was constantly taking photos. And uh, several uh, very uh, prolific. Well, that, that uh, would be me, probably, yeah. with digital and analog and film and everything. About 4.15 on our first full day of sailing. The sun's just come out. We're in the Drake passage right now. So I thought I'd take you outside. Yeah, so it was just gorgeous. This was the fourth deck. You could walk all the way around the ship. So I want to take you guys along with me. Lifesaver. Important, I guess. Didn't need it on this trip. Maybe I can <laughs> but the starboard side is where all the action is. It's sunny out there. How much does it sway? Uh, it sways quite a bit, actually. Here we go. It's beautiful over here. And, and you'll see, um, it, the waves are larger than they look. Um, I think we were getting like 30, 30 foot, 10 meter seas for a bunch of it. Um, it's hard to walk. Everyone looks slightly drunk. I'm, I'm not <laughs> drunk. Just, love the color of the <laughs> Just water. hard to walk. I didn't realize this would be this cool. It's really, really yeah, the, the color of the water was, was really special. It was very deep blue, really nice. Looks clean. Yeah. So, you know, you just talked about clean. Uh, it, it's a pristine environment down in Antarctica, um, and it's all protected. So it's, it's a refuge. and um, So the true operators are, are mandated to make sure that you don't bring any seeds from your country of origin down there. Um, they could take over so they vacuum everything out and they're very very thorough it's very exciting the boat has stopped we just finished dinner and the boat stopped we heard all this really loud rumbling and so now we're obviously not moving the water isn't passing by us you can see that things are staying completely still you can see icebergs or land it's definitely something on the horizon but not sure if we're actually at the con at the peninsula yet or not so let's see, let's see what we've got going on. Really hard to tell. So after, you know, being in all this open ocean, it's very exciting to see your first icebergs. And I, th I do believe there is some land there. Um, I can't be 100% sure that's land or if that's just more ice. But uh, yeah, so we, we eventually got to the peninsula. And once you get to the peninsula, you, you start your routine of going out in the mornings and then in the afternoons for excursions. You leave the boat, you load into these zodiacs. But this morning was so foggy. Look at that fog. And oh. so we couldn't see the land, we couldn't see anything. So we were kind of ex expecting that it was going to be sort of uh, not a whole lot to see. Um, we we're going to be heading to a little island and to see our first penguins. And um, so here, you load into these zodiacs. Here, this will give you a uh, sense of the size of the ship we were on. Um, it was not a monster. And you load out here and you get, we started here with just our first safety talk. Oh, so yeah, of course, you don't want to get, go overboard. Um, should, in the event that one of you guests fall overboard, and in 12 years of driving small boats at sea full time, it's never happened to me. <laughs> So we're uh, contained the motor, 
through the fog. How cold is it? Uh, you know, it was not terribly cold. It was about zero Celsius, mm -hmm. 32 Fahrenheit. The wind, of course, kind of makes it. Oh, you know, the wind always sounds worse because of the, the camera mic that I had here. I did record with an audio recorder, but I didn't take the time here to sync it. I had to sync it manually and I didn't have the time. But anyway, we, we broke out of the fog bank and this is what Whoa. it looked like. <laughs> It's kind of impossible to see the scale unless you have something in front of it. Oh, wow, that's big. And behind me is Trinity Island. The continent's actually over this way. Um, but we won't get there this morning. So I am surrounded by whale bones. You see them up here. <laughs> and penguins. So I'm going to do my best. To film some penguins this morning. An awesome opportunity. It was an awesome op opportunity. And one of the really interesting things about being in Antarctica is that it's been protected from hunting for since the f 1950s. And so, so many generations of these animals have come and gone not perceiving human beings as a threat, as, as, as a predator. So they just do not care about you. <laughs> and and uh, so you can get right up to them. You're not allowed to get within uh, five meters of them. All right. So I had a yeah, two, I, the I had a 200 millimeter lens here, but um, yeah, but so then there's seals and um, um, you're, just, you're just surrounded by all these penguins. And one thing though, they don't tell you about in all the National Geographic, you know, movies and everything about penguins. Let me is guess. That penguins smell smell so <laughs> bad. It smells like a chicken house. Oh, I mean, wow. it's just there's poop everywhere. You'll see a lot more poop, <laughs> but you can smell the penguins long well, there's, before there's no you one to can clean see up them. them. <laughs> and they're eating all the krill and everything, so it's it's quite potent. But you get you get you get sort of used to it. But anyway, you're just surrounded. Everywhere you look is glacier. Everywhere you look is glacier, and mountains and you know tall mountains. You can see that fog again. Yeah, and but look, look, look at the landscape there. I mean, it's that's that's my landscape. That's that's the place I want to be. Yeah. So and then you know penguins <laughs> <laughs> and lots of different ones. Yeah, yeah. We saw three different species of penguins. Um, They're kind of cute. Yeah. And again, they just the, it's really. Uh, incredible opportunity for wildlife photographer photography because they just don't they're not concerned about you in the least bit I like their hops <laughs> that guy uh, that guy right there is is cooling himself off they use their fins as uh, radiators oh. so anyway we get back on the boat and um, it's time to see some more and they don't of uh, like the the environment and and the environment is ice. It's ice and water, ice, water, and rock. Uh, there's no trees down there, of course. So you can see the boat in the distance there. So we we got quite a distance away from the boat and were able to really explore all of the different ice formations and everything. But look at the look at the contrast there. Oh, look at that. So one of the things that I know you've noticed in Iceland, uh, Chris, is the Ice is blue, it's not white. Oh, yes. It's blue, and, and I believe this, this guide here, his name's Dave, uh, he goes, uh, gives us a little talk about why it's blue. Right here. Looks like a Whoa. penguin. This, you guys, is a really good example of why you're seeing blue in the ice. So all of the other junk that we get in here has all these, these air bubbles in it, you know, that are snapping off and you can hear them popping. So that's all the air in there is reflecting the, the light and making it really, really white, right? But, um, so that's all air bubbles in there. But, this piece of ice, you can see, has no air bubbles in it at all. It's just been compacted and compacted over centuries and centuries in the glacier that it's pushed all the air out. So it gets really, really dense and the light goes into it and the blue and the purple light are the only wavelengths that are emitted from something this dense. And that's why we see it as blue, but it's actually clear, as you can see. Seth studied with Jay, we studied with There you go. Wow. So, because um, we were 
we were on a photography workshop. Um, it was really important for our group to really shoot the the icebergs, and so we you'll see a lot of amazing iceberg footage here. But look at that! I mean, just That's look at that. <laughs> <sighs> and and of course you had you could you could ask the guy who, who who the boat guy to go back and forth and move to different places yeah yeah and you know and and we were constantly moving all the way around these uh these bergs to get the best light and um this was a bluebird day this was just a, a stunning day this is probably afternoon at this point um and uh so but you'll see in, in, in a little bit that we didn't always have the stunning weather, but it's uh, obviously it's... Here comes this nice starburst here. Nice. Um, but it's the, the more uh, tumultuous weather that makes the for the more interesting photographs. Well, with this, I'm getting Adrian plenty of is, sky. I'm uh, getting the reflection here. here. I'm basically getting from right off the side of the boat to above the sun at 60 millimeter. I'm also looking for those shapes in front. Yeah, big yeah, chunk of ice. See you at all. Sorry, but I'm on the, uh, the back side of a very large... Or maybe the mountains in the back. No, 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 I know. No, no. I have a problem with the mountains. And the sunset. Yeah, so at the end of the day, and, um, yeah, the sunsets down there are fairly dramatic, as you'll see. Well, this already looks looking good. Or are you telling me it gets better? Uh, it gets better. <laughs> but uh yeah the 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 tour operator gives everyone these yellow jackets that's why we're all looking like we're in uniform oh okay so that's kind of included <laughs> uh it was on this trip yeah nice waterproof uh wear but uh yeah so you're just surrounded by all this wildlife so here are these birds that were hanging out with us i think these are arctic Turns or turns, I forget right now. Quick trip mm. to Wikipedia would solve that, but I haven't done that. So yeah, there's, then again, you're just uh, you're moving from point to point because it's a cruise, so you wake just, up. Just you know. love the layers and the shapes and oh look, <laughs> that. now that you fixed the exposure. Yeah. Whoa, what a sky! Yeah, so it was it was pretty special, and this was the first day. This was all just the first day. That's so amazing. that gives you an idea of what you can experience in just one single day. Um, so it's it's pretty special. So we'll fade to black here and then we'll uh, wake up in a different location and I'll just give you some highlights of the rest of the, the two weeks. So as I said, it's a pristine environment. So you also have to go through this kind of virus side here to make sure you're not bringing any uh, nasties onto the continent that could uh, endanger the animals. And you get in your Zodiac at the stern of the ship and then you head out for who knows what amazing beauty you're going to see that day pretty calm waters yeah yeah it was nice um some of it was almost like going on uh floating on a mirror um but uh that's for photography yeah it was you know all kinds of uh different in, uh terrain and everything so there's a nice little scale shot there Whoa! <laughs> okay, now I do have the scale. Yeah. So look at the different forms you get. I mean, every iceberg oh, look, is different. Look at that cloud behind them. Mm -hmm. It's just sitting there. But all these different ridges in this iceberg. I mean, this iceberg must have been in a completely different orientation. Um, it must. It's, oh, it's shifted about ninety degrees. And it probably slid down somewhere. Yeah. And this way, got the ridges. Yeah. Maybe. The ridges wow. are probably all different, all different uh, water levels. Um, for or that, it. so yes. it's, shift, it's shifted. It, this this iceberg has been on quite a journey here. But I mean, I mean, even just the reflections in the water. I mean, look at the opportunities you have here for photography. It's just astonishing. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm coming around to you. I know why you want me there. So we're cruising here in the distance. You can see some penguins jumping out of the water. That's called porpoising. I believe, and um, they're just, uh, yeah, they're just swimming around. And when we came across this one, this one was really wild too. You can see this one had shifted quite a bit as well. And, you know, remember the majority of the icebergs underwater. So these, these are massive, massive structures and they can shift uh, very quickly. And you can only get so close to them. 
And if you do get shift, speaking of shifting, I know where I want to use my tilt shift. Lens. Yeah, you want to use your tilt exactly shift all, all over the place. Here. <laughs> Holy cow! So you can and see on the this, layering. Yeah, the la lost so much layering, and you can see the weather oh. on this day was different. And Doesn't so matter. we were starting to get the darker skies, which became very exciting um, because you really, you know, you have so much opportunities to get all these different. Uh, um, yeah, like you said, all the different layers. This is at Port Lockroy here, and this was an excursion we had to get some more penguins. <laughs> and again, weren't you, they just weren't don't you fed care. Up, fed up with penguins after a while? I, uh, think I, I don't think you could ever get fed up with penguins. They're so much fun to watch. I just gotta shake his, <laughs> his butt. <laughs> you got a little something on your back there, pal. <laughs> There's a joke there, but... <laughs> I don't think it's a joke, I think it's just the truth. Uh, dude, you got you got poo on your back. <laughs> yeah, they, they tend to poop on each other yeah. quite a bit. <laughs> oh, and the blue, the blue, the blue. I just, I just have to say, also, the people you meet on these trips are pretty incredible. That uh, gentleman I was talking with, that was my roommate, and... Um, David and and he uh, he'd actually he's a doctor from Canada and he'd actually volunteered in Nepal and he'd uh, gone to Mount Everest so Very we had cool. quite a bit to talk about. Well, here's Seth, one of the other uh, leaders Shoops. leaders of our group. There's light glimmering off this left side. There's a big blue hole right about three quarters of the way up. The sky is split, pitch black, and then lighter. Just a great form. This is like a this is an iceberg's iceberg. <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. It was more like a castle than an oh, iceberg. Yes. Look at that sky. Oh, uh, I can see so many amazing pictures. And I was seeing here, I'm not looking at the iceberg right here. I'm looking at the water splashing up on the iceberg. Because you get these lagoons. For video, it's kind of hard to hold the camera still, though. Yeah, I was doing my best. <laughs> yeah, no, tri like no tripod needed in the boat. Still photography is from the boat. Oh, mm -hmm. and it's obviously bright enough, too, so... Can we get our group shot taken of us on the iceberg? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> Might be the last thing I ever do, but... That's a great idea. <laughs> cool. I want to be so that Ooh, that look at the shape. So we've come around... Um, We've come around about uh, 45 degrees on this iceberg, I think. Uh, maybe maybe 180 degrees, and you know you just see all so much different. This is a separate iceberg, obviously, but if you listen carefully, you can hear it popping. That's all the air being released from the ice. And this was all within 15 minutes here. All of a sudden, we see these humpback whales. And what we're going for is we're looking for the tails. Here it goes. Here we go. Here it is. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> do they just do that, or is it is it something they do for? Yeah, they're Ooh, feeding yeah. there. <laughs> well, I thought the funniest thing there is you hear all the shutter releases. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. That's... <laughs> just listen to the shutters. <laughs> That's photographers. It was cracking me up. It was just like machine yeah. gun fire. Um, but yeah, so we, we hung out with this uh, group of humpback whales. So when they they arch their backs and then you can see, you can tell, you spend so much time down there, you get to see, you get familiar with when they're going to go down for a feeding, and that's when you see the tail come out of the water. And so what, they were, what we were trying to do was get them to um, f go down for the dive and get their tail so we could get it, you know, the water in the foreground. The tail and then the iceberg in the sky. All do, the same do they shot. care about? Do the whales care about the zodiacs? Not at all. Not at all. Or they're, is they're it dangerous mean, to be around them? I mean, no. Could, could, I mean, I mean, I technically it's dangerous, but it's dangerous to cross the street. So you know, it's, all, it's all relative. But no, these were these 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 guys were were great, and they really treated us to quite a, a viewing here. There you go. There you go. There you go. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. And it's actually much closer than it looks. They're probably only 40 feet away. And there's some more uh, penguins. 
Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that surprised me when it surfaced there. That this was probably only so twenty feet off the underwater. Oh wow, off the boat here. That was one, so the other one is somewhere. Oh, it's underneath us, yeah. Oh, he's right there. there. He's right underneath us. Yeah, so the whale is pretty much had swum underneath you, you, us there. You see, you see the white? He's coming, he's coming up, up for here, right here, right here. Right here. With the head, with the head, with the head. He's gonna check us out. Oh, he's not heading. Oh, come on. <laughs> so that was a special afternoon. That was so real any, special. Any interaction with the whales of any kind, or no, you just watched? I mean, them? they no, they they were checking us out, and they're they're more interested than you know. They're not they're not afraid of of you, and they're not. You know, you are not a threat, and so they're just more interested. So you get all these opportunities, and you know the photography opportunities are just amazing here. So, um, and the other neat thing about Antarctica is that there's no indigenous peoples, so no one owns Antarctica. For, you know, technically, no one owns it. Some countries lay claim to it and everything. But no one owns it, and you can you get that sense while you're down there, and it's a really unique thing. You know, when we go to Everest, my most my, my favorite thing is the the local people. But there yeah. are no local people down here. Uh, there's just the wildlife. This is a leopard seal, and uh, leopard seals look like snakes almost. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at that face; it looks reptilian. It looks it does, like bored. <laughs> it does not look. It's just. Uh, I think this was a female. She was just uh, staying warm. Not there. She's actually holding her her flippers up <laughs> very daintily. <laughs> but uh, again, here I was probably shooting with a two hundred, the 70, 70 to two hundred uh, cannon. Um, but uh, yeah, so you get to get right up to them. But but you have this sense of you you know this is your land too, and it's really special. It's really it's it's unlike any other place I've ever been. And uh, we're just seeing such a small part, but there is, you know, there there is some places that people have had habitations, and so we, this, this is called Whalers Bay, mm. and uh, so this is a place we we went near the end of the trip here. So I thought I'd put this in because the textures and the um, layers again, really really amazing for composition. So this was an old uh, whale processing facility, I believe. So they had some, you know structures here and some lodging and then you'll also see the tanks where they actually they rendered all the fat so that was um, given up in oil the and everything you say uh this one probably dates even even earlier um but you know completely abandoned obviously and um but remember everything was brought in here by boat um there's no wood and uh this day it i don't recall it raining i think it was just warm enough that snow and ice was melting that's where all the water was coming from. <laughs> what? This is another up. That's almost like urban exploration. But it's not urban, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's the It's really okay. out there. I mean, yeah. Um this was this is Can probably you imagine living there? Uh, I mean, what what a beautiful yet stark and barren existence it would be down there. Um and certainly not everyone made it out. Um and uh, so what, what, uh, what I'm going over here, and also, also the sand and everything is, is jet black. That was really interesting. It's all volcanic. Um, but uh, yeah, so these are the old uh, storage uh, containers for, I, I believe they were for uh, whale oil. Just left there to, to rot. That is wild. And it was really, really amazing to walk around and just, you know, you can go anywhere you want. And uh, really the only the only rules down there are stay, you know, as much as you can stay, you know, three or five meters away from from the wildlife. This is large format material. I oh, had can you imagine? <laughs> oh. I've had the 4x5 out Goodness. in no time. Set up a tripod, get the cloth out, get some beautiful... Maybe even black and white film in there. There's oh, look at the landscape. Yeah, and so like I said, not everyone made it out. So this is uh, this is a grave. And um, 
I believe, let's see if we get another close up here, this is, um, but I believe it's from the person who was born in 1871 and died in 1928. So yeah, this one was old. And um, anyway, so I just wanted to kind of put a, put a hodgepodge of material in here just to kind of get people excited about, you know, just, just what could be seen down there and um, for Chris to, you know, virtually take everyone with him if he gets on this trip. I think it's, it, there's, there's a real, real possibility he could win this thing. And I wanted to get the tips from the top floor uh, community excited about the potentials because he will be able to podcast the whole thing right chris well you, you get me excited um there will certainly be enough time there on the on the ship this is a again you said it's a 30-day thing um so there will be the time i'd see lots of time to produce stuff so um while i would probably not have any internet out there while out there i'm pretty much gone for a month um i'm pretty sure i could bring back a whole lot of material a whole lot of photography videography podcasts yeah, uh, probably ready to drop as soon as you get off the boat in yeah. interviews with penguins um <laughs> so. no no you get me all excited i've i hadn't seen much of that video before you just showed me that and this is yeah this is beautiful so i'm just pulling up the the itinerary map here starts in New Zealand, goes through Scott Island, Cape Adair, the Ross Sea, along the, along the. And that's all unknown terrain shelf. for me. Yeah, I was only along the. You were on the other side, right? Yeah, I was on. I was on the peninsula. And then, and then ends up in Argentina. Of yeah, all so you'll, that's that's where we began and ended my trip. And you'll, so it's you'll pretty much going going from from that side of the world to the other side, yep. but on you'll the be, lower side. You'll be traveling from New Zealand to um, Argentina. I, I don't to Argentina and Ushuaia, the, the little southernmost city in the world. Yes. So yeah, um, if anyone can't spare a vote oh by the way of course this is open for everyone so everyone has yeah, anyone else can chance uh, to go there there is a there is a, a place where you can see the rules and and uh, pretty much en enter your own entry if you want to let me know if you have to uh, if you have so I'm actually planning when I'm back from uh, Ethiopia I'll be gone through the month of January so mm -hmm. at the end of January when I'm back um, if you have a page up there I will put a page up on tips from the .com where I put all other people's links who have signed up and who gave me the information so people can find your entries as well and vote. For yeah, them. and the voting lasts until February 29th. This is a leap year. That's when it closes. 2016 is leap year, so uh, February 29th is when it closes. And then I think they make their final decision in March. Right, and, the, will and, the, and the, the cruise will be in 2017. So 2017, uh, in, so a year from now, yeah. Summer, uh, the Austral summer. So, um, John, thank you so much for, for kind of uh, for, for almost kind of pushing me this way. <laughs> um, you did a good job, and I think I really want to go. So, uh, a little vote would be really appreciated. Yeah, so let's send Chris there and uh, let's see what he can come up with. So, yeah, thanks for your time, Chris. Well, thank you, John. Thanks so much. No problem. <laughs>